Hello and welcome to my new series I'm calling Surviving the Cataclysm. This is going to be a multiple part series focusing on the basics of Cataclysm and how to survive beyond a few days and overall improve as a player. This is a hard game and death is a constant threat. However, you shouldn't look at dying in this game as a bad thing. Dying is a learning experience and you can very much improve with each death as long as you reflect on why you died and think about how you can avoid dying in that situation in the future. This game is a learning experience bef before anything else. Now, before we get started, I will mention I'm using the tile set and sound pack I'm using. So, if you want, want the game to look and sound exactly like mine, you can do so. So, first of all, if you want to install sound packs, uh, you should probably be using the CDDA game launcher program. If you don't have that game launcher, or you don't use it. I will include it in the description of the video below. Now I know some people play this game on mobile. I have no idea the difference between this and mobile. So I don't know if you can even do this on mobile in general. But that's my sound pack. This is it is it is at sound pack at apostrophe s sound pack. That is one of the several you can download. So feel free to use that one. Use none of them or use any of them you choose in the CDDA game launcher. It's very simple to install and use. So I don't feel like that 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 program needs a, needs a tutorial. It's all pretty self-explanatory stuff. Now for the tile set, I'm using the Chibi Ultica tile set. Scroll down here to find it. The Chibi Ultica tile set because it is the most up-to-date and maintained tile set out of them all. It has the most amount of stuff with tile, tiles for it. There are still a few things in the game that don't have a tile for a tile set like sprite for it yet. But sorry, ignore that. Steam interrupted me. Anyways. So I'm using Chibi Altica and if you if you really want something else you could also use the overmap tile set uh, ASCII tiles if you want the your overmap to look like mine when you press M to open the map button lastly I will note if you haven't realized it already I am playing on the experimental version of the game I do not play stable if you play stable and still want a tutorial uh, I'm sorry I don't play stable however I think a good bit of this knowledge will carry over anyways even if you don't play experimental because it is the general habits and thought process that really help push you further in this game because this game is learning learning experience like I said before anything else and experiencing this stuff yourself is how you really improve being taught and told what to do only gets you so far in this game you really have to develop your own instinct of what not what to and what not to do. But yeah. Other than that, I hope you enjoy the tutorial series. Make sure to leave any feedback or questions for me below. I'll do, do my best to answer them and help you out. I'm pretty active on YouTube, so I should reply pretty quickly. Um, if you have any other ideas for video series, I, sh I could do that would seem interesting. Uh, make sure to leave them also in the comments below. And yeah, uh, let's get to it. Alright, so the next part of this will be me going over the world and character creation. A very important step in having a good experience in this game. Now, I will, I'll be going over a lot of stuff even though we won't, we won't be utilizing a lot of the settings because I feel like it's worth talking about since this is, this is a beginner tutorial of the game. So first, you're going to just name the world. I'm going to name mine Tutorial so I know what it is and then for these settings you'll notice there's these sliders that you can change to make the games make the game easier more difficult if you look at the bottom you'll see that there's some hotkeys you can press if you press S it'll open the advanced settings menu or the, the, the legacy settings menu for the world creation so you can change the size of the cities, how far apart they are, the spawn rate of monsters, 
there's two spawn rate spawn rates s settings so the fifth one this one is spawn rate scaling factor that one determines the density of the monsters this includes every any, anything that can spawn that isn't an NPC which is, includes wildlife creatures not just zombies now you want you want to leave this stuff alone generally however if you want a bit of an easier time you could turn this down like 70 75 because if you press enter the enter key you can actually choose a very specific number you want for it we're, we're going to be leaving a default you can also determine the item spawn rates which means the higher or less to set the item spawn rate setting is the more or less items you'll be finding in the world this is a global factor this changes the spawn rate of all items including the rare items so I wouldn't adjust this the game is balanced around this being at 1.0 um, if you reduce it you know you're like oh well food is too plenty I, I want to make food less common if you reduce this to make food less common you're also making everything else less common too it makes the game a lot harder it, it, it becomes difficult to find like basic tools to do literally anything so I will leave that alone random NPC spawn time is just the random timer that determines when NPCs can spawn or where they spawn so if you if you want less NPCs you turn that number up if you want no random NPCs you turn them down to zero monster evolution so monsters and zombies will evolve over time as the game goes on they, they become more difficult and much more dangerous um, you can leave this at four if you want that's the default you could turn it up if you want to make them evolve slower so if you change it to eight instead of four you're doubling how long how long it takes for them to evolve naturally keyword evolve naturally you can also turn it to zero if you don't want them to evolve at all however I would leave this at four if you increase it and you get used to having it increased it'll be hard turning it down because you won't be used to how fast they evolve so I would leave this at four monster speed this is how fast the monsters move now now in Cataclysm, the speed stat doesn't determine just how far you move. It determines how many t like attacks you get in a single turn as well. Because everything you do in this game costs like speed points, quote unquote. And by increasing this speed stat, you're also making them get more turns to attack you. Do not touch this. If you want an easier time, turn it down. Do not turn it up. The game is balanced around the speed of being 100%. Turning it up will make the game absurdly unfair monster resilience if you want easier or harder to kill monsters turn this up or down this determines how much health they have and how hard they are to kill so you can turn the up or down if you want I would leave a default uh, ignore that setting initial time and day this is the initial start time and the, the, the initial day of the season it starts at this does not advance monster evolution or food rot to change this day spawn delay so if you if you set a spawn delay it determines how far along the cataclysm is when your character is put in the world so for example if you set the spawn spawn delay to 50 you will be 50 days past already which means food will be rotted 50 days more than they normally would be and monsters would be 50 days evolved more than they normally would be do not change this this is a important that you leave this alone in my opinion season length don't that that doesn't really matter too much so leave that alone construction scaling don't worry about that eternal season so eternal season allows you to keep your initial season forever so if you want to start and like have infinite summer or infinite winter or something you can do that day night cycle normal day night cycle is the default you can have eternal day or eternal night as well which means night and day never end and finally the last two the last few options so wandering hordes that's a pretty this is a pretty controversial should you use this or should you not use this setting if you're new to the game uh, don't do it um, some people believe that this should be on at all times because it adds a constant persistent threat so you're never safe I do not believe that's fun as a beginner so I would leave that off if you're bored of the game and you want to make the game more interesting turn wandering hordes on but basically, uh, 
zombies will be will act like hordes, and they will group together and wander around cities and 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 move towards noise and stuff. And the current implementation does not respect obstacles properly, so so quote unquote hordes of zombies can appear to walk through walls, and appear where they shouldn't. So the the the, the zombie spawns will be very strange, and unpredictable, and can sometimes appear inside of your base if you have a really big base. But let, let's not worry about that. Let's do that default. Surrounded start. Do not turn this to true. Surrounded start means you, zombies will spawn in a pretty healthy number all around your start, making it a lot more difficult. Do not touch this. And the mutation by radiation, that's self-explanatory. Character point pulls, leave that alone. And meta progression, you can leave that alone. So with that gone over, we're just going to leave everything default, as seen here. Now if you press Ib, you can open the mod manager, and you get a plethora of mods you can pick from. I'm not going to be using any of these. I'm going to be doing a default vanilla game with the, with only the four mods, five mods you see on the on the right. So yeah, we're going to leave everything default. We're going to finish, and that's with our that that is our world made. And next, we'll move on to character creation. So this is character creation. Now character creation is arguably the most important part of the game. We're going to create a character in the tutorial world we just made in the last in the last segment. And now while I'm while it's loading, I will mention that this I will be using default settings. So this will be a 90% default character. Now for for the point system, um, here's what I would suggest if you're new to the game: use single pool for the point system. Don't worry about the point system too much. Don't don't obsess over it. So don't worry about the point system. Ignore it. So to keep to keep things simple, use single pool, and basically, if your character creation is kind of it's kind of up to you how easy or hard you're gonna make the game. So don't worry about the point system too much. For scenarios, you'll see you'll see there's a lot of scenarios you can pick from. Like for example, you have like really bad day and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Ignore these. We'll be doing the very top one, evacuee. Our profession will be survivor. This game has a lot of professions. Anything from a hobo or a failed cyborg. Or a shower victim, all the way down to stuff like a bionic soldier, or a combat engineer, or a, or a black belt melee master. So backgrounds, um, for this for this playthrough, we're gonna be leaving backgrounds alone. Backgrounds are sort of like um, flavor and like traits that help determine what your character is is good and bad at and there's quite a few of them there's there's some bad ones too like butchering butchering makes you uh, unable to eat fruits and vegetables in general but you have you get a good start to, to survival and food handling skills so your character is pretty good at butchering the cooking you know you could be like a crack addict if you really wanted to I don't advise picking these dependencies don't 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 pick these ever unless you want to make the game much harder so stats starting stats um, we're going to leave these alone but I will go over what these stats do roughly even though the game explains it I will explain what these do a bit easier so strength is your overall like you know body strength and durability so this affects your your carry weight in pounds your base HP which the base HP of all of your body limbs because your, your body has five different six different targets sorry your head your torso and your four limbs arms and legs it also determines the the base damage of your melee attacks or the bonus damage of your melee attacks it adds a bonus so you notice if you increase this your HP goes up but we're gonna leave it default dexterity is your accuracy is your melee attack accuracy you more accurate if you have higher dexterity. Um, your dexterity makes your throwing and ranged attacks, like with guns and bows, and throwing rocks and stuff, a lot more accurate as well. So there's that. Intelligence is determines how fast you can read books and how fast you can cr you craft. So the more intelligent you are, the faster you'll read and craft things. You know, a nice bonus. Perception, 
determines your ability to see things like traps and actually vision spaces. So the more perceptive you, the higher your perception, the more spaces away you can see from in the dark and stuff. And the better you are with ranged. So if you see minus 14 for aiming penalty, if you level to 14, that's it, it's literally half of the penalty. So there's that. And then here is the traits menu. There's a lot to look through. Don't worry about these. If you if you feel overwhelmed, just don't regard these. If you're playing along with the way I, I play, yeah, don't worry about a lot of these. There are a few traits. There are there are. It's a trait or two I will grab, just for the sake of things. So, one trait I will argue that's really valuable to grab is night vision. Night vision is really good. It 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 allows you to see in the dark better. And this helps a lot for what we're going to be doing, which is going we're, we're going to be looting towns and exploring cities and stuff at night because it's much safer. So this helps a lot. Another another nice trait to grab would be fleet-footed. I said we're, we're going to do it like a mostly default character, but I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to grab a few traits to show you with the really good ones. So with our eight points, we can grab a few traits, and it won't it won't hurt a character that much. We're gonna we're gonna grab quick as well. For seven points so we have one more point with quick and fleet footed and night vision you will be pretty hard to zombies will be have, will have a pretty hard time catching you now one other thing you can grab since this is a tutorial character I can show you one more trait you can grab which is parkour if you grab parkour you'll be at minus one points however we can fix that so you see we're at minus one points now that we have parkour so we have parkour we have fleet footed we have night vision and we have quick now we're at negative one points. We need to earn a point through this through this list because these are the traits on the on, on the middle menu are negative traits. I guess I should have gone over that earlier. But if you if you look at them and and read them and read, read what they do, traits on the left are positive traits. Traits in the middle are negative traits, and traits on the right are cosmetic and do not change your character at all, like statistically. We're, we need to look for a trait that will that we can grab that will very little impact our game but give us one more point to counteract all of our bonuses we've grabbed we can we can grab heavy sleeper if you if, if, if we want heavy sleeper makes it so um, you're harder to wake up which can be a bad thing sometimes if you choose to for example want to wake up through a, an alarm clock and wake up at a certain time of day it makes it harder to do that, so you you could not grab that. You could also grab a far sided or near sided, and you'd have more points to spend on positive things. But we will grab something that will give us just a single point. I think we'll go with heavy sleeper, and you, you know what? No, we'll go with truth teller. Truth teller. Truth Teller makes lying to NPCs a lot harder. You can't basically do it. So yeah, we'll grab Truth Truth Teller. That like impacts your game basically none because NPC interactions are very bare bones. And my advice for NPC interactions: don't 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 focus on NPCs. Kind of ignore them. Pretend they don't exist, and don't focus on NPC the dialogue trees. Don't focus on their don't focus on the quest lines because they're not they're not finished yet, and they're not even remotely close to being finalized. So. Don't worry about the NPCs. Um, they're kind of a, a an absolute pain to deal with sometimes. They're they're very stupid. So don't worry about them. They're inconsequential. Now the next tab is the skills tab. This is where you can determine your starting skills. So if you spend you can spend points to level these. Spending a single point to upgrade one of these skills will level it to two out of ten. 10 is the maximum in any of these skills. However, these starting skills, for the most part, do not matter. There's only a few times in the game where these starting skills actually matter. But I'm not going to go over that. That's for a different video, probably. But for the survivor evacuee shelter start, the default start of the game, you do not need any of these. So if you go to the final description tab, you'll see our character is has level 1 in athletics, he has fleet-footed, night vision, 
and quick with truth teller and parkour expert. So these are the eight points you get, so th this is this is a nine point character with one negative trait which has no impact. Now the reason why I said bare bones is because I consider this a bare bones character. You could do a default with literally no points spent anywhere with no positive traits or parkour at all. You could do that too. I'm going to be playing it this way so I can show you how powerful and useful these increased movement speed traits are. Because fleet footed and quick give you extra speed, and, and it makes it easier to easier to to move around, which makes outmaneuvering zombies and other things a lot easier, which is very important in this game. And parkour expert, I'll explain parkour what parkour does as a tr as a proficiency uh, when it's relevant. But we're gonna name our character. We're gonna name this character John. I'm I, I'm gonna name this character John. John. Tutorial is going to be his name. Yeah. It's him. John Tutorial. Gender. Pick what whatever gender you care about. Height. So if you want a little fun fact about height. Um, if you want to quote unquote min max this character. Make your character as tall as possible. And make your character as young as possible. Because uh, the younger you are and the taller you are. The more, start, the more stamina you have in your stamina pool. Which is very important. So if you want to have an, an easier time, make your character as tall and young as possible. Blood type, I'll be honest, I don't know what this what this does at all. I don't know if this has any impact in the game. So don't worry about that. Because it sure doesn't impact me. No, we're not finished. Lastly, I will talk about the, the starting location. Because in your description, if you don't know, you can pick your starting location. You can do this by simply hovering over the starting location and then pressing enter and then you get to pick and pick an option. So if you leave it on random for, for the evacuee shelter start, there is a chance the evacuee shelter will randomize as a already looted and basically mostly empty shelter. So make sure you pick one of these three that aren't random. Otherwise you can actually spawn with a a, a looted shelter and you'll have very little to very little resources to to go off of so if you're just starting pick one of the the three presets that like pick central central pillar or something for example or pick um yeah let, let's pick compartmentalized that way we're guaranteed it will not it will spawn as a clean unlooted shelter that's important you can also press forward slash on the keyboard to open this menu quickly, you can press Shift Two or or, or, or at um, Shift Shift Two to change your gender. Um, if you want to save your character as a template, you can press Shift One. I, I'm talking as an American keyboard, so I'm sorry, but um, you can press exclamation point. If you see the bottom left, exclamation point opens the character template. To at or shift two opens the genders or swaps genders and forward slash on the keyboard opens this menu. and if you want from here you can press shift forward slash or question mark to open the key bindings menu to look at the key bindings on this menu this key binds menu is shift question mark you know just question mark on your keyboard which is shift forward slash this menu is viewable on almost every menu in the game. If you, if you press this, you can look at all the, all the advanced details for the keybinds on all menus and even change them up. So if you don't know what, but what buttons do what in a menu, shift, forward slash, or question mark will open the keybind so you can know what, what button does what. This is important. So keep that, keep that in mind. That's, that's pro tip number one is question mark, shift question mark. Is, what, is how I say it, because it's easier to remember if you say shift question mark, you know exactly what button to press. Because forward slash does that. Shift forward slash does this. But enough of that. So so that's character creation. And the next part, well, I'll, I'll actually start the character, and I'll show you the very base process of what you should be doing at the very beginning of a shelter start. So yeah, I'll see you in the next part. Alright, this is the first few moments in the game. I took a few steps, of course, to just 
test the sound sound level. But yeah, so here's the f first spawn. As you notice, we start in a small shelter, and we we start. These always start with an NPC inside. Um, do your best to ignore him and don't pay him any attention. Don't talk to him. Don't make him mad. Etc. So now for the survivor start, if you press I on the keyboard, lowercase I, you'll open the inventory menu. You'll notice we have some stuff in our pockets. We have a bottle of water with two drinks in it, a, a smartphone, a pocket knife, and a matchbook. For our equipment, we are wearing jeans, a boxer shorts, you know, a shirt, a messenger bag, shoes, socks, and a watch. So wh when I do things, I will be talking about the keybind, to, to press, to pressing the keybinds for it, to tell you what I'm pressing. Once I tell you how to press it, I'm not going to bring up what, but I'm not going to usually bring up what, what button I'm pressing anymore. But so first things first, I'm going to press M on the keyboard to open the open the map. Z press Z to zoom in a bit, or Shift Z to zoom out. And then you can use the arrow keys to move around. I, I I move around with the with the number pad. I suggest you use the number pad to move as well, because the number pad allows you to move diagonally as well. So if you press one, seven, three, or nine, you can do diagonals like that. You can't do that with with, with, with arrow keys, because you press arrow keys, you might notice it goes up. And if I press like up left to go diagonally up right. Sorry, upright to go diagonally upright. If you notice, I it, may, it, may, it makes two motions to go upright. If you press, you know, nine on the keyboard, you go up in a single motion. That, that's important. So to move diagonally, use the number pad. But, you know, so we open the map to look at, first things first, always open the map and look, look at your start. Don't do anything until you look at the map. That way you know where you are and you know your surroundings and you know what you should and shouldn't do first off because sometimes you might start in a really bad spot and you need to keep them keep in mind there might be things coming after coming after to kill you now if you notice from from what we see here you see a bunch of F's which is forest the green F's are forest these blue F's over here sorry if you're colorblind unfortunately it sucks if you're if you are because you can't probably see the color difference between these two but these F's, these six F's here, the blue colored, cyan colored F's, these are swamps. Stay away from swamps. End of, end of story. Swamps are some of the most dangerous places in the game. So this green stuff is forests. This this gray stuff is a road. I was not self explanatory, but I'm bringing it up anyways. Green, the green roads are forest trails. They're really hard to follow, so just kind of don't pay attention to those. And then this brown over here is a farm. It looks like, yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a dirt road with some like farm land attached to it. And then down here, you'll see a um, an unusual stone barn. Is is the brown V? The green arrows and the, and the and the green V's are houses, like like pedestrian residential houses. So, there, there looks like a city below us and a city above us, too. Because up here are some more houses. These are usually part of a city. So, we have two cities next to us. We also have a red plus down here. The red plus is an LMOE shelter, which stands for Last Man on Earth Shelter. These are really good, and you should absolutely try to visit them when possible. They'll sometimes have some zombies in there, but we'll go over that, dealing with them when we get to that point. But... But first of all, you know, we see that we're in a pretty remote place with with not a lot of threats around us. There's nothing, like, really noteworthy near us. There's not a bunch of, like, we're not in the middle of a city. Because we picked a shelter start, we're not in the middle of a city or close to a city. Evac shelters always start on the, always spawn on the outskirts of cities. So they're not, they're not ever, like, directly inside a city. An evac shelter, an evacuee shelter, is a white plus on the map. Same as a LMOE shelter, but it's white instead of red. So now that we've looked at the map, we know where we are, and we know we're safe. Next step, we're going to move over here to one of these windows. We're going to press E, 
and then we're, we're gonna press the arrow key or we're gonna press the number that you know to, we're gonna examine the curtain with E and if you examine the curtain with E you'll see there's two options to peek or tear down if you press peek through the closed curtains you can look through it without being seen so you're kind of just peeking through the curtain you can do this on several sides too and and look at all the curtains this is this is a good way to get the um, a rough idea of what's outside without having to reveal yourself so here's the second tip so 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 you know you're looking outside and you want to check if there's any monsters any monsters or any things in your vision you want to you want to keep in mind so here here's a hotkey for you shift V shift V opens the view tab right so anyways if you if you press shift V when you're looking at the curtain you it, it'll, it'll open an items menu it'll show you all the items you can see in your view if you press tab in this menu you'll swap to the monsters list which lets you view all hostile and non hostile monsters in your view as you see here there's chihuahuas down here chihuahuas are not is outwardly immediately hostile but I would avoid them if possible because they can attack you an early game if you're not like kitted out to deal with it they can probably hurt so you want to minimize as much damage you can take as possible take no damage under any circumstance is my point so you know we, we peek through that curtain we're gonna we're gonna go up here and look through these up cu top curtains there's some rocks I see the road there's no monsters we're gonna peek through this curtain check for monsters still nothing peek through this curtain still no monsters we're gonna peek through this last curtain over here no monsters okay so there's th there's nothing of threat around us at all we're we're safe we can we, we can breathe a sigh of relief now that we know we're in a really safe location and we we don't need to be afraid of stepping outside because sometimes you you should be afraid of stepping outside because sometimes this game will spawn very dangerous things just near your shelter and you need to you need to be absolutely aware of what's out there without letting it see you because once again this game is about staying safe so you need to play careful and you need to take your time because time as you as you well know time does not pass in this game unless you do something kind of like super hot if you know that game as long as you're standing here time will not pass as you see the time up there which is 80125 time doesn't pass now I could go over a, a, a quick button you can press where what what button is it this button so it's shift and then right bracket to open the sidebar options so this is the sidebar options you can customize the sidebar how you see fit with shift right right bracket so it's so yeah there's it's shift and right bracket to open this menu and then you can feel free to use the key binds in the middle to customize the menu how you see fit But yeah, that was a, that's a side thing. So, as you see in our sidebar, it there's a, a bunch of a bunch of info on the sidebar. I'm not going to tell you what all this, what all, the, all that does until unless it's relevant. Um, if it, when, if it becomes relevant, I'll bring it up. So not the you know not no information overload stuff. Up next, I will tell you what the first things you should do now that you've after you've examined your surroundings because the first thing you should always do when you when you spawn a, on a new character is do not do anything until you you've assessed your surroundings and you know what's going on around you once you have that information you can then proceed to start playing the game quote unquote so first thing you should do is probably check these doors this door is locked so a locked door in the shelter is the one that leads to the roof. We'll 
we'll bust that down when we when we get to it. But don't worry about the locked door for now. That locked door doesn't lead lead anywhere important in the immediate moment. There's there are lockers to loot, but we'll worry about those in a minute. So there are stairs. So each evac shelter start. To, I don't remember every single layout like, like off the top of my head, but there's like four or five shelter layouts. They always have, from what I remember, they always have a stairs down. The stairs down leads to a bunch of like you know benches you can sleep on. This is where you typically want to sleep if you, if you, if you want to live out of the evac shelter as like your first base. This is where you go to sleep. You go down here, you shut the door, and then you sleep on these benches. Because this, this, these benches count as a comfortable spot to sleep. Not that it would be comfortable, in my opinion, to sleep on a wooden bench, but... Hey, better than the floor. Up here is the bathroom. If you press... It, oh yeah, I guess I, I'll, I'll, I'll bring him in our key by now. If you press lowercase, the lowercase X button on your keyboard, you'll bring up this menu. This look option where you can examine things from a distance. Time does not pass when you're doing this, so feel free to take your time. Of course, so pressing X, you can look around. You can look at that shelf. It tells you what it is, what the floor is, and just gives you descriptions of it. it tells you it's cover from projectiles and stuff. It tells you if it's smashable and etc. Tells you the lighting, and it tells you what's on the shelf. If you can see it within your character's vision. So, we see that there's a, there, there's towels, bleach, ammonia, toilet paper, soap, and toilet brush and plungers. If we go in these doors, these doors lead to the bathrooms. Whoops, I'm wrong, wrong, wrong menu. I'll get to that menu eventually. There's soap, paper, and scrub brushes in the trash can here. There's protein rations, some junk, and a rain poncho and emergency jackets. There's toilets in here. This is the same thing. There's some other junk on the ground here. Some some stuff in the trash. Toilets and then the, the sinks. Alright, there's stuff on the ground here too. There's vinegar and some protein rations. So we'll go back upstairs now. So now with that said, the first thing we need to do is we're going to go... Let me look at this curtain again. Yeah, so if we look at the items list, we notice that, that there's a, um, a rock off in the distance. We're going to go grab that rock. You you, you want to grab a rock. A few rocks when you start. Okay, so yeah. So now that we stepped out of the, um, the shelter, because a potentially hostile enemy or a threat is on, is on our screen or in our vision, we now have these chihuahuas. And because we have, we, we have safe mode on, Safe mode makes it sure make sure so you can't take your turn at all, do anything. Once you spot something dangerous, it prevents you from passing time without noticing knowing something dangerous is on your screen. So safe mode lets us take our time and figure out what's the danger and how we should deal with it before we can do anything. So I'll go over a keybind change real quick, but if you want to dismiss this safe mode warning, you can press apostrophe. We're going to press Shift V and look at the Chihuahuas in the Monster menu. And if you notice, at the bottom where it describes the Chihuahua, you see where it says Tracking. Now, if you notice the green text underneath Tracking, it says Can't see to your current location. That means they cannot see us. We are out of their vision. And it is about as fast as me. So its speed is about equal to ours. Now, the speed is important to note always look at how fast something is so you know how to deal with it if it's always if it's about as fast as you which means it, it, its speed matches yours roughly you need to keep that in mind and make sure it doesn't gain any ground I'll go over that eventually though so there's that so now, now that we have this done we're, we're gonna show I'm gonna show you a key bind so you see this toggle safe mode wait no no no, no not toggle safe mode it's called ignore nearby enemy so ignore it nearby enemy. I set a I set a, a keybind to it. It's normally apostrophe. I have a, I have my own keybind applied to it, which is which is Shift Q or capital Q. Shift Q will dismiss the option. Same thing as apostrophe. I have Shift Q as my as my bind for it because it's just quicker to access for me. 
than apostrophe because my hand is always on the left side of the keyboard near shift and tab and all that. So we're gonna we're gonna press the the button to ignore that threat. If they don't come any closer, they're not a threat. With that in mind, we're going to move up north where we saw these rocks. If you press G, you can examine. You can you know pick to grab nearby objects. We're gonna not we're gonna not grab that sharp rock. Sharp rocks we don't need. If you press G, we're gonna open this menu to menu where it says where it shows us we can pick up the rock. Now in this menu, there's a lot of details, but I'll go over what's important and then I'll go over stuff that's important later on when it is relevant. So for now, we're going to hover over the rock, which is the only option in our menu. We're gonna press right on the arrow keys. And then we're going to press enter to put the rock in our pocket. So now we have a rock in our pocket. You could pick this rock up over here if you want. Not that the spawn will be the same, of course. We don't need that rock, so it isn't. we have a pocket knife. But we're, we're going to open this view menu again to look for anything else that we might want. So there are some rocks to the southeast, southwest of us. We might want to grab, but that leads us to the Chihuahuas. We're going to go. We're going to go in through back where we came from. The Chihuahuas are going to stay put, so we're fine. Actually, I will grab the second rock while, while it's right, literally right here in front of us, just so we have a second rock. So we're going to go back in, we're going to shut the door, and now we're going to press lowercase w, or you know, just, just w, to open the wheeled menu. The wheeled menu basically lets you choose to put something in your hands. We're going to wield a rock in our hands, you know, rust style basically. And then we're going to, we're going to smash some of these benches. So we're going to press S on the keyboard which will bring the prompt at the top. So that says smash where. We're going to press the direction on the keypad. So we're going to press 1, 2, or 3 to smash one of these benches on the, on the bottom. We're, we're going to press S and S and do that a few times. Eventually, if you, it's random, RNG based when you smash. But with 8 strength and a rock, you will be able to smash these benches. So we're going to we're going to smash all three of these benches down here. And if you notice in the top right menu, now that we've been doing some smashing, I will explain a few things. Or I will explain one thing. So you see that the stam in up here? Can you see my cursor? Oh, you can. Okay. So up here near my cursor, you'll see the stam. That is our stamina, obviously. It, it calls stamina to do the smash action. Keep that in mind because managing your stamina is extremely important. It is one of, one of the most important things in this game, and I cannot stress it enough. You need to watch it very carefully and manage it as obsessively as possible. So now that we have that done, we're going to press G, and if you see, now that we've smashed these, these benches, we get some scrap metal, nuts and bolts, and some splintered wood. Now planks are nice because we'll need planks. So we're going we're, we're gonna, to we're gonna press W again. And we're, we're going to pick the rock we're wielding. If you pick the item you're wielding in the wield menu, you'll get the option to store it or drop it. So we're going to store the rock we have wielded, so we have empty fists. So now we have two rocks in our inventory still. We're going to... Uh, okay, here's where I'm, I'm going to introduce a new, a, a, new, a new option. So if you walk on top of a bunch of items and you're standing on the same tile which of items are, if you press backslash on the keyboard, you will begin hauling items. Now, when you're hauling items, it takes a lot, it takes time, but if, if you're hauling items and you choose to move, you will bring all items on the tile you're currently standing on to the next tile. However, you cannot haul items unless unless you're standing on a space that already has items on it. So you so you can't press like we stop hauling and we press items to haul here. You'll notice it, it, it says there are no items to haul here. We have to be standing on the tile first to haul items. So, we're, so all those planks and scrap we got from busting up those benches. You know, press the, the backslash again to stop hauling. So we hauled them all into one space. And now we can see all of the s scrap we got from, from that. So now we're going to wield. Press W to wield again. 
we're going to wield a plank this time because I'll go over another detail now. So if you look under the wield menu, you'll see a bunch of numbers. I don't really pay much attention to those at the moment. The one that matters is if you notice, every single wieldable thing has a bash value or has a dam has dam a damage value tied to it. Some things don't have damage because you're not. It it means it adds literally nothing to your attacks if you equip it. The melee the melee, you know, column is the bonus or penalty to accuracy versus on the attacks with that weapon. So if you notice, planks have a minus one to melee accuracy, and moves moves is how much sp quote unquote speed it takes to swing it for a single attack. Planks are a terrible weapon. Do not use it as a weapon. We're going to, however, we're going to wield a plank because if you notice in this menu, there, there's a bash value. This bash value is what determines how much how easy it is to smash to S smash items into scrap, which is what, which is why earlier we wielded the rock. The rock added seven to our bash damage, which gave us enough bash to easily smash the benches. Your strength also also adds to this because your strength adds a bash damage bonus to all your attacks. So the higher strength you are, the easier you'll smash things. And also the better smash the better bash weapon you have equipped, the easier you smash things. So we're gonna equip a plank now. We will move down to these lockers. We we're gonna press G. And if you notice, sometimes G will ask you pick up uh, pick up items where. If you're near multiple tiles that have items on it, you'll get this you'll get this prompt. You get to pick a direction on the keypad to examine which space or tile has item that has items on it you want to look at. So now we're looking at the locker in the bottom left. To the leftmost locker. It has a blanket, a jacket, a pamphlet, a flashlight, some water and rations. Now I'll go I'll go over some things here. This pamphlet useless. You just don't worry about it. It doesn't exist. The flashlight doesn't have batteries, so it's kind of just kind of not useful at the moment. We'll we'll leave it there. Water and rations we'll leave there. We don't we'll leave there. We don't need to carry anything, carry any food or drinks with us right now because we're just kind of hanging out in our base. If we were gonna leave to go do things outside the base, we would carry some food and water with us. But that's for a future to point to bring up. Emergency blanket, you'll want one of these to put down to bring down to your sleeping spot when you choose to sleep at night. I'll go over that when we do it. The emergency jacket, if it's really cold, like if you start in winter or fall where it's cold, you'll um you know, you'll you'll want to wear the jacket. Because the jacket will add 25 warmth to your arms and your torso. Which is which is nice, and I'll explain those systems later on in a later part of the video, or later video in general. Because the encumbrance and like warp system and stuff gets a little complicated. So, for now, we're gonna just ignore that. We're gonna we're gonna smash the locker that doesn't have any items in it. Not that it matters, but we're we're gonna go we're gonna smash we're gonna smash a single locker. And if you notice from smashing a single locker, we got a pipe, some scrap metal, and scrap metal sheets. We're going to haul the scrap back up to our pile over here. Alright, so now the next step. We're, we're going to press D. Here's, how, here's, here's also how you get rid of something you're, you're holding in your hands. We're going we're gonna to stand on the tile that we um, tile with all their stuff on it. We're going to press D. And we're, we're, we're going to go to our planks. Now, here, here, here's something to mention. So when you're in this menu, this drop or inventory menu, and you notice there's two rows of stuff to pick from, but you can't press right on the keyboard because it would it would select the thing to drop. To change to the other menu, the other the other half of the the menu, like what you're wielding or wearing, you press left on the arrow keys to swap swap this menu. Once you're here over here on the plank, you're gonna press right on the on the arrow keys to drop the plank. So we drop it on the ground. Now the plank is back on the ground. All right, so next we're gonna press Shift Seven on the keyboard or the and symbol, ampersand, whatever you wanna call it. And you'll notice it brings up a crafting menu. Now I'm I'm not gonna go over it, m much of this crafting menu because it's too much to explain. But basically, 
you know, you can choose to craft things like a screwdriver or it makes you a crowbar. We're going to, okay, so here's, here's, here's how you do this. So you're going to press forward slash on the keyboard, the, the question mark um, key on the keyboard, forward slash. And then you're going to type in crowbar. You will be able to craft a makeshift crowbar. If you notice, though, at the top right, it says too dark to craft. To craft items in this game, you need um, a, a you you need light to be able to see. So we're we're gonna go over this window. We're going to press O on the keyboard to open the window. Opening the window will let light into 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 the into the building. We're going to open the crafting menu again with Shift Seven or ampersand. We're going to type in crowbar, and we're going to craft a crowbar. It takes five minutes, and it costs a pipe with a tool of hammering one. We have a rock, which counts as hammering one. If you can't find a rock outside your shelter, then smash two lockers, and then you can use a second pipe as a hammer to make the first pipe into a crowbar. Yeah, that's what you do. So you either need a rock as to use as a hammer, or a second pipe to use as a hammer to make the crowbar. We will make the crowbar. And, and, and if you notice, over here on this right menu, it says our practical skill and fabrication is leveled up to one. That just means we have leveled our fabrication to one because all your skills start at zero. And okay, so if you wanna look at the character sheet, press shift two or at, and it'll bring up this character sheet with all, a bunch of stats. So, if you notice here, all of our stats, including dodge, start at zero. Of course, we we, we grab parkour, so our athletics technically starts at zero, starts at one. Oh, by default, it, it all starts at zero. So, we're gonna get out of it. And now we're wielding our makeshift crowbar. If you if you press enter while hovering over an item in your in your inventory, I menu, you can view the advanced details of the item. This 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 makeshift crowbar is a pipe with pipe with ends that have been bent and hammered flat, so it resembles a crowbar. Use it to destroy open locked crates without destroying them. You could also use it to lift manhole covers. What it doesn't mention is if you look at the, at, at the kind of middle bottom here where my mouse cursor is, you'll see has qualities: level one hammering and level one prying, which is what what matters. We're not going to use this as a weapon. This is not a weapon we're going to be using. So don't worry about these stats. This isn't this isn't our, our, our melee, melee weapon. This, this kind of sucks as a melee weapon. First, we're gonna go over here, back to our window. We're gonna press C to close the window, and then we will now move back to this locked door. Remember this locked door. We're gonna press E on the on the locked door. Now you see how it says we can't pry it open. Now this is because our crowbar doesn't have a, a high enough level to a high enough prying level to level it open. It's a it's a makeshift crowbar. It's not the best in the world. However, if you notice our crowbar has a bash of twelve. Planks have a bash of fourteen. But you, you you want a crowbar anyways. I'll go over why you want a crowbar later, but it's not important for this, but we will press S to smash. And we, we will hit the door a few times to smash it open. Once the door's gone you'll see the, the door's just you can walk through it. Now when you're if you're when you're on the ladder you can press page up on the keyboard to go up the ladder. So if you notice, there's some stuff on the roof. There's a bottle of vodka on the roof. There's a standing tank, a roof turbine vent, and a solar panel, and a, a gutter drop. So do not do not smash the standing tank. Leave the standing tanks alone. The standing tank will be for a future use for us. For now, we will go to the solar panel. We will press S to smash the solar panel. The solar panel drops to a bit, to chunks of steel and some electronics, a solar cell and some copper wire and scrap metal, and some plastic. We will we will press haul. If you notice here, it says now that we have something in our hands. When we try to haul, our hands are not free, which makes hauling slower. What that means is is to haul items, it will now take more time to haul the items. But that don't matter. We're gonna haul all this, all these scraps over here back to our little pile. Now, here, here's a tip. So, we're gonna drop our crowbar, crowbar on our pile of stuff for a second. So, here, here's a tip. 
If you don't want to open the windows because you're afraid of what's outside, and you still want light, if you haul if you haul your stuff over here to the computer, the computer provides a, just enough light to craft by. You can also craft over here on, on this on this um on this ladder. I guess I should mention I forgot to mention going down the ladder. You press page down to go down ladders and stairs, and press page up to go up and down ladders. You know what? I should have mentioned that earlier when I was talking about the stairs. But yeah, sorry. Sorry about that. That was a mistake on my part. So, you press page down to go up and down ladders and stairs. I should have mentioned that before. I'm sorry. But. So now we have, if you notice, okay, I'll, 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 bring, up, I'll, I'll bring up one more thing now. So if you notice up here where it says lighting, cloudy, that's about, that's the lighting of where we're currently standing. Right here it says cloudy lighting. Over here it says bright. And then up here it says very dark. Very dark lighting means we cannot craft and we can barely see. However, cloudy lighting means it's it's just bright enough for us to see and craft by. So we're gonna we're gonna press shift seven again or and ampersand slash the you know the and key to open this menu. We're going to press forward slash again. And we're going to type in screwdriver. If you notice, it says we need a, a tool with hammering two or more to craft a screwdriver. So we will instead search for a hammer. And if you see, we need we need to to make a makeshift hammer, which has a level of hammering two. What we need is um, string. So to get string, what we can do, if you examine these curtains and make sure there's nothing of threat outside on that on that side of the house, yeah, yeah this is fine. So we're gonna examine the curtain and we're gonna pick tear down the curtains. So now if we tear down the curtains, you'll notice we have we got some, four nails, two sheets, a long string, and a stick. So now that we we grabbed these, we're gonna ca we're gonna haul these with the backslash. We're gonna haul these back to our little loot pile down down here by the computer. We will now open the crafting menu again with Shift Seven. Type in hammer. And because we we got long strings, see this is important to know. We got long strings. This crafting recipe requires us to make sh requires us to have short strings. So. We're going to press Shift B, which opens the disassemble or butcher menu, and we will we will disassemble our long string under this menu. Pick yes, and we now turned our our long string into six shorter strings. So we can now press the up arrow key on the search menu to go up the search history. We can now make a makeshift hammer. So we will craft a makeshift hammer with a with, with our stick we got from from the the curtain. We now have a, we now have a makeshift hammer which is on the table I think. Yeah yeah if you make it on the counters, if you're near counters when you craft, your character will craft them on the counter and I think your character gets a small crafting speed bonus when he makes stuff on the counter, if I remember correctly. So we made a makeshift hammer. So now we have a ha a tool with hammering one. Or hammering level two, we're gonna we're gonna press we're gonna use G to pick up and put our hammer in our pocket. We are now going to search for the screwdriver. We can make the screwdriver because we we have we have the planks from the from the benches. We have our makeshift hammer, which is the hammering two, hammering level two, and we have two chunks of steel which we got from smashing the solar panel above us. The screwdriver is important. We will make the screwdriver. We will then grab the screwdriver off of off of the cupboard counter. So now we have a screwdriver and a makeshift hammer in our in our pockets, along with rocks. So we're, we're gonna go ahead and press D to drop. We're gonna drop the rocks on the ground on our loot pile. We do not need them at the moment because we have a makeshift hammer, which is just better than a rock. So now that we have that, we have a screwdriver and a hammer. 
We also grab our makeshift crowbar and put it in our put it in our bag as well. So now we have our, a crow, a makeshift crowbar, a makeshift hammer, and a screwdriver in our pocket from when we started. We're going back up to, to, to here, and we will now open a new menu. We will press the asterisk key on the keyboard to open the construction menu. You're going to pick the very topmost option, deconstruct furniture, and you will you will deconstruct the standing tank. When you deconstruct a standing tank, it will give you a water faucet and four large 60 liter metal tanks. So that's important. We will um, we will haul these back down to our loot pile. And now we will we're gonna peek through the curtains again because what we want to look look for now we want to look for water. There's there's some water right here on the ground near the Chihuahuas. We might go down there if we can't find water elsewhere. We're gonna zoom out with Shift Z. We're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna take a good look around. I do not see water this way. Peek through these curtains to see if there's water water over here to this side. Doesn't look to be. Okay, so our, our only option is to get water from either over here, near where the way we saw the Chihuahuas. Or we, we can get water from the toilets downstairs. However, I will do the slightly more dangerous thing so I can show you how to handle it. So we're going to open the crafting menu again with Shift 7. We're going to go to the. We're going to press Tab to go to the weapons menu. And if you notice, we can make a few things. We can make a wooden club, a rock and a sock, a pointy stick, a, a nail board, a large wooden club. We're going to search for something. We're going to. We're going to search. Okay, so yeah, we don't have the. We don't have the fabrication level for that yet. So, we need a fabri higher fabrication level before we can make the the be the better weapon. Um. So we can make a pipe mace. If we wanted to, the pipe mace is kind of slow. Out, so here's a problem. Everyone swears by the pipe mace as being like a great weapon. I don't think it's a good weapon. It's a slow weapon, and it takes a lot of stamina to swing. So I don't advise using it or relying on it. So instead. Um, the wooden club might be useful. A rock and a sock isn't that good. So I believe we will. We can also make like try to make like a knife spear or a two by sword. If we had wood sawing, we can make a two by sword. But the most important stat you see on this list is um, the base moves per attack. That. That's how fast it. That's how long it takes to swing the weapon. You want this to be low. The lower, the better. So, if we notice, the wooden club up here has a base move of 120. The rock and a sock has 89, for example. The nail board has 121. This has 173. And then, like way down here, the the Zvi timber has 142. We're not gonna make any of this stuff though. We will be now if we had pipe fittings, we could make a pipe staff or a, um, a quarter staff if we had a long stick. So we're going to grab a plank. We're gonna we're gonna head outside this way, going down here to avoid the Chihuahuas from being from seeing us. And we're, we're going to use X to look for a young tree. Yeah, like this young tree here. We're going to smash the young tree. The young Smashing the young tree will give us long sticks. We'll press backslash to haul the long sticks. We're going to haul the long sticks back up into our, 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 our little loot pile. 
And now we can make a quarter staff. This takes an hour. And we can fail. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna make a quarter staff. So we, we will. However, I, I will note real quick though. Before we craft, if you noticed, we we now have very hungry as as our status effect. Our character's getting hungry. So we're gonna look around for for something to eat. Over here in these counters, we have several food rations we we can eat. So here's the next keybind I, I will talk about. So another keybind I have changed is um. So this is this keybind here is important. So by default. The Shift E button will open this Consume All Items menu, the red one. I have unbound that, and instead I have bound Consume Item by Type to the same button. Now, if I if I remove this keybind, and I and I bind the default back, if I press Shift E, it'll open this menu that lets, lets you eat and drink anything around you. However, if you have a lot of stuff around you, that gets kind of annoying to have to look at the menu. So, instead, by, press, by opening the key bindings, key bindings menu with shift question mark, or shift forward slash, I will go to consume, I will press minus, and then press A to unbind, consume all items, and then I will press shift equals or plus on the keyboard to open, to uh, add a local key binding, pressing B, to pick the consume item by type and then pressing shift E to bind it to shift E and now when you press shift E it will open this menu here so now we can pick food drink your medicine so individually we will pick food and we will eat three rations three of these protein rations so now our our um, our hunger is satisfied we're gonna go ahead and move over, move over to this water. We're also gonna drink out of some out of one of these waters. So now we're full and slaked. We're gonna drop our plank on the ground here. Open the crafting menu again, and now we're gonna now that we're full and slaked, we're going to we're going to use an hour of our time. First, we're actually let's craft this in, craft this in the light so it's faster or slightly faster. We're gonna craft this in the light, and we're gonna make a quarter staff, which, which will take an hour of our time. It's now it's now 10 a.m., and we now have a quarter staff. The quarter staff was put on the counter. If you notice, the quarter staff has a move cost of 90. It's got plus three to melee accuracy and 15 bash. We're gonna wield the the quarter staff, and if we press if if we open our inventory. And we press enter to look at the quarter staff. I, I, I will make it make a few notes. I, I will make I'll, I'll mention a few things about this quarter staff. So what makes it so good is it it doesn't weigh a lot. So it, it costs a lot less stamina to swing than like the mace does, for example. It does decent damage, and it has three different techniques that are really useful when you wield it. So for example, um you. These are used randomly when you attack. These these aren't something you get to choose to use. These are automatically used as you attack creatures. So you get some. Sometimes you will proc or activate one of these three three things. So for example, rapid strike is is twice the speed for 66 percent of the damage. Sweep attack will knock down whatever you hit and stun it for two turns basically. And then parry is when you're attacked. You will block some of the damage with your with, with your with your staff when you're hit 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 with a melee attack specifically. So it's a pretty it's a pretty good weapon. Pretty good weapon. So we will now go back outside. We're gonna try to deal with deal deal with the Chihuahuas now. That now. We're going to see if these chihuahuas are going to bother us. So if you notice, I'm going to use this this cover, or the, the, this these bushes, to my advantage. Like this grape bush, or the um, strawberry bush. 
I'm just gonna I'm just gonna fight this Chihuahua so I can show you what to do in, in a combat scenario in case you get get into one early with like a single zombie or something. So this Chihuahua should be aggressive to me at some point unless it's not hostile at all. Okay, it, it's not hostile at all. Okay, so because the Chihuahua isn't damaged, it's not hostile. If it was damaged at all, it would be hostile. But, okay, so the Chihuahuas, the Chihuahuas are no problem. They are not some, something for me to worry about. Knowing that, I'm going to go back inside. I will drop my quarterstaff on our loot pile over here. I will then press W to wield. I'm going to wield one of these metal tanks. These, these are heavy, so keep that in mind. Do not fight with these. We're going to move down here. We're going to stand near the water. We're going to press E, where it says what what to do with the water from recess. And with that, we are going to pour into a... We're going to pick the second one. Pour into a can container. Do not consume this water. This water is not clean. So we poured all the water... We put all the water from the recess into our standing tank, which now is... Got two, it has 237 water in it. This is this is way heavier now. So carrying this, we'll, we'll lose stamina as we're carrying this with in our hands. We're gonna we're gonna close these doors. We're gonna go over here. We're gonna drop our our metal tank on the ground real quick, like that. And now we're going to do the next part. So, real quick, I'll, I'll bring something. If, if, if you want to rec recover your stamina in the easiest way possible, you're going to press Shift Backslash to open the Wait a While menu. You're going to click Wait a While, and then you're going to click Wait till you catch your breath. And it says, You finish waiting and feel refreshed. So now our stamina is back, back to full. And now. We are going to open our crafting menu again. So if you notice, it says brazier. So we, we, we want to make a brazier. How do we do that? Well, if we deconstruct one of these, uh, if we deconstruct, not smash, if we deconstruct a locker, we will get, four, we will get m many more pipes and sheet metals from deconstructing a locker than we ever would smashing it. So, by deconstructing a locker, we have gotten ourselves sheet metal. With sheet metal, we can make a brazier. We will, we will craft a brazier. We will get level 2 fabrication. So, level 2 fabrication, we now have a brazier. We will pick up the brazier. Alright, so... Next on create next when we um, create the brazier. After we make the brazier, I'm sorry. After we make the brazier, we're going to press A to open this activate menu to use an item. As you notice, you'll see our brazier is de deployable. We're not going to deploy it here, of course. We're going to go outside, just out here. We're going to press A to deploy the brazier, and we're going to deploy it. Just pick a direction on the keypad to deploy it. We'll put it right outside. Like that. And now we have the brazier deployed outside and ready set up and ready to use. So next we're going to wield our crowbar and we're going to smash some of these so some more of these benches. There we go. Alright, we're we're gonna we're gonna put our crow we're gonna press W and then choose our crowbar in the big store and inventory to wield and put away our crowbar. We're going to press backslash to haul all these scraps of benches over here. Now we're going to haul all of that stuff we just broke onto the brazier. So now we have a bunch of planks and scrap wood on inside the brazier. Now you don't want to start a fire 
like like outside of a brazier. Because if you do, a, the fire might spread, and you, you don't want to catch this building on fire. That would be very bad. Because it's because this all, all this this wall and floor here, all of it's flammable. This will this this whole thing will burn down if it catches fire. Do not light a fire on these without without being inside of a brazier. So with that said, we're going to actually go back here to our to our tank of water. We're going to wield the tank of water. Now, now when we're back over here at the brazier with our water, we're going to grab our matchbook, press A, and then pick our matchbook to choose to light a fire. We're lighting a fire in the brazier. So now there's, you know, a fire burning. So now we're going to press, uh, okay, so here's the next little key bind I'm, I'm going to teach you about. So next, you're going to press Shift D, or capital D, to drop where. This lets you choose a spot around you you can drop stuff in. We're going to press Shift D, and then we're going to press 6 to drop a, to, to drop on the direction where the brazier is. Now with the fire going, actually wait, let's wait like a minute for the fire to get going. Yeah, yeah, this fire is going now. So now we're, we're, we're going to press Shift D. We're going to drop on the brazier. We're going to drop our metal tank of water on the brazier. Now, because our metal tank is fireproof, it, it won't burn. We, and if we drop our metal tank on the brazier, it'll sit in that brazier in the fire and heat up until it gets hot enough to clean the water. Now you could clean the water through the crafting menu because there is an option for that under food. Yeah, clean water. You can you could use a fire with like a pot to boil water to clean it that way. It take it takes quite a while to do that though. The fast way to do it is to just leave this a fire going and just drop the tank on the fire. If you wait long enough and it doesn't rain to put out the fire, that fire will eventually clean all that water without us having to do anything about it. We don't need to sweat about that though because we have bottles of water already in here. So the last thing we're going to do for this video, we're going to, um, we're going to go ahead and disassemble these other, these other lockers and we're going to haul all the scraps onto our loot pile over here. Keep in mind, it might, it might be too dark to construct. If, if, if it is, you can... Um, if it is, you can press Shift G to grab the locker, and then you can use the arrow keys to move the locker around. So just press Shift, D, Shift G to grab the locker, and then move the locker into a spot where you can actually see, see enough to disassemble it. We're hungry, we're going to eat again. We're going to eat just enough rations to go back to sated, or satisfied. So, you know, now now we're satisfied again. We're, we're going to also haul all of the goods from over here on top of this pile, too. One last thing we're going to do, we're, we're going to go down here and check once more. We're going to check everything that, that's down here. Because sometimes there, there's first aid kits down here. Unfortunately, we don't have a first aid kit down here. Which sucks, but... Oh, well. So, to summarize, you know, this, you know, this, this is, this video kind of has gone along enough. But this is the beginning of what you should do at the start of all your shelter starts because you know once this is done we'll have um, more clean water we'll have more clean water than than we'll ever ever need for a long time to almost 240 units of clean water that's a lot now I, I, I can do a later shorter video if like just to show you other ways you, you can get water and stuff without having to like you know go and like drag a big metal tank around but that's that's for a later video
So once that once that's done, we'll have a lot of water. We have plenty of food thanks thanks to the rations. We have like 18. Um, no, that, that's water. We have actually like like over 30 wrappers of protein rations, which will last us like that'll last like a week in game if we really had to live off of nothing but protein rations. So we have, we, have, we have like a week of rations, and we have like we have as much water as we'll ever need. We also have plenty of materials to craft some things. We have a lighter. Actually, I'm I'm gonna pick up the lighter, put the lighter in my pocket. So now we have a matchbook and lighter. So if we ever need more fires, we have plenty of means to do so. But yeah, this is um the first. This is the end of the first video, I think. Um, I may have missed something. Some things. If if I miss something, make sure to make sure to ask about it in the comments below. And I'll, I'll I'll reply to you and you know like fix my corrections or whatever. But in the next video, I will be going over um what what you do after you get to this point. The most the the most important thing in the game is how you handle yourself in a dangerous situation. I will be putting my putting this character in dangerous situations regularly to show you the power of movement speed and how to avoid damage without putting yourself in a lot of danger. Sorry, of how to kill things without putting yourself in a lot of that danger. And I'll also be showing you some habits you should have, such as um, basically don't don't fight stuff because you see it and it's attacking you. Don't kill it just because it's there. If, if you have to kill it, do it. If you don't have to kill it, don't. Kill any minimum. They're, they're, you gain very little from killing killing stuff randomly. At least in vanilla, you get there's no point. Without mods, there's no point killing a bunch of zombies. So, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll go over that stuff in the next video when I upload it. But yeah, this this is the end of that video. This this is the end of the video. Um. So thanks for watching this far, and if you have any you know questions or comments, like I said, or any feedback, leave them below. Or, or you know, if if you're an, if even if you're an experienced player, and you have some tips to to leave in the comments, do so as well. You know, I'll I'll make sure to bring them up in my next video or in a future video as well to help out people. So, yep, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.